we're here to document a rare event at one of Las Vegas' most historic high schools. We're at Western High School, built in 1960, and the rare event is the drilling of a new groundwater well. Why here, why now, and why can we do this to augment our water supply safely? You're gonna learn all those things. Stick around, it's gonna be a unique, interesting journey. Where Western sits is actually really interesting as far as our water supply is concerned. It sits right on the edge of the original Las Vegas Springs where water first bubbled out of the ground and where settlers could actually make Las Vegas their home. Western is the Valley's third high school after Las Vegas High School and Rancho High School. So with this in mind, drilling a new well is a rare event. This is an operation that is running 24-7, and I'm bringing in the expert on this project, Jason Bass. He's a hydrologist with the Las Vegas Valley Water District and the Southern Nevada Water Authority. He's the lead on this project and knows a lot more about groundwater than I do. Tell us how it works, because I think, by and large, you know, we know groundwater exists, but we don't know exactly how it arrives where it's at and how we get it out of the ground. How does that work? So what we have is we've got precipitation that happens to the west of us in the Spring Mountains. That precipitation, snow and rain, floats through cracks and into the gravels within the Las Vegas Valley. And as it infiltrates down, as that snow melts, you start to recharge the actual aquifer here in the Las Vegas Valley. There are multiple layers in this aquifer. There's sands and gravels that transmit water very, very effectively. Then there are also fine grain units that are silts and clays or caliches. And those are bounding layers. Water doesn't flow through those very well. So as the water flows down from the mountains, it'll go underneath what would be a subsurface shelf and it'll actually build up pressure. So you've got water that's coming in up here, pushing down to here. And then over at the Springs Preserve, we actually have faults and fractures in those layers that allow water to spring up. And that's what initially created the big springs. I know we're drilling down into the ground about a thousand feet. How is that water pulled from those locations and brought up to the surface? So essentially what we do is we come in with one of these large scale drilling rigs, drill down to a thousand feet, we case the well, we test it. Then we come up with a safe yield for the well, find a flow rate that's, that's stable for that well and potentially for the aquifer around it. We take and essentially install a pump down at the bottom of that, uh, not the bottom per se, but halfway down the well we'll install a pump. What that pump does is actually takes the water at that, lo at that layer and pumps it up to the surface where then it can be treated and introduced into the distri distribution system. Can you talk about some of the neat visuals that we're seeing over here? So what we have, we're drilling the well, we've got fluid going down the outside of the borehole, and then at the very end of the borehole there's something called a tricone drill bit. That tricone drill bit has three different cones on it with carbide buttons on them. It rotates around and it grinds up all of the formation that we're drilling through. Then that actual ground up material is pumped up the actual drill stem, comes all the way up the mast. You can see this black hose that's coming up with a little red line on the side. Goes all the way up, comes back down, goes over to that ground white tubular structure. That's called a cyclone. Goes through that, kicks down onto the blue thing right there, which is a shaker table. Blue thing, is that a technical term? Very technical yeah. term. I work with drillers a lot. Once it goes into the shaker table, the shaker table has an electric motor on it with a counterbalance. It's very similar to your cell phone. If you turn the volume off on your cell phone, the reason it vibrates is because there's an electric motor with a counterbalance on it, right? Spins up, rattles. This has a large scale version of that and it has a bunch of, a, a series of screens. Now the drilling fluids are allowed to flow through those screens, but all of the material that we're pulling out of the borehole gets shaken down and deposited into the dump truck that's sitting right there. So this site was the site of historic Well 26. This new one is gonna be Well 26A. Uh, well 26 was drilled in the mid 60s and has been in use until I think 2015, 2016, at which point it had ended its true service life. So on this site specifically, we already have all the distribution, all the electrical, everything that's needed to take groundwater out, to get that pump to pull water out of the ground, introduce it into a pipeline and ship it over to the Charleston Heights pumping station for treatment and distribution into this system. So it really facilitates um, a faster hookup to the system. 
decades ago, wells were the primary method of getting water for early settlers in Las Vegas, but overpumping was a problem. The city of Las Vegas was concerned about water conservation then, just as we are today. In fact, they ran conservation ads like this to make sure every gallon was used wisely, and we're carrying that conservation mantra on to today. Throughout Las Vegas' history, up until early 1970s, we relied entirely on groundwater. Back then, Las Vegas was uh, had a lot of agriculture in it. People were drilling wells, they were extracting groundwater. They over exceeded the basin's carrying capacity, so the water in the ground was being drawn down, potentially hundreds of feet by estimates. Once Colorado River started augmenting the groundwater, we started reducing our reliance on the groundwater, on the resource here in the Las Vegas Valley. Currently, the Las Vegas Valley Water District has a just under 41,000 acre feet that we can pull out of the ground. But in addition to that, we've taken Colorado River water and injected it into the ground to bring some of those water losses back. So our annual water supply allocation is 300,000 acre feet from the Colorado River. You're talking about 41,000, so there's the math. We have our allocation. But we also have somewhere around 61, 62 production wells that we can use so we can modify our pumping strategies where we pull water out of the ground to minimize aquifer reduction levels. Basically, we're trying to level everything off, not see any losses in aquifer levels, and try to manage the basin as best as we can. Jason, is there always new water coming into these aquifers? Every time we have snow in, in the Spring Mountains or we get rain, does that augment that groundwater? Absolutely. We get very little infiltration here in the Las Vegas Valley. In the valley floor, you don't get a lot of transfer from precip into the ground. However, in the Spring Mountains, every single winter time we get snow up there. That snow is a strong component of what flows into this aquifer. There was a bit of a noise break. We could get a little closer, Jason. They're just adding another piece to the drill bit to get down deeper right now, is exactly. that it? Exactly, exactly. So we've got multiple pieces of drill stem and you can't just take one drill and drill a single hole down into the ground. You have to continually add these 30 foot long joints of drill stem and that's exactly what they're doing right now. Jason, the average person doesn't fully grasp again what goes into drilling a well, what goes into keeping our water supply secure for the long term and this is just another piece of the puzzle. Thanks for coming on and explaining all this. You're very welcome, more than happy. Drilling a new well doesn't happen often, but when it does, it is a strategic move based on history, based on science, and based on good water management. And we hope you learned that today. Thank you for watching this video about how we drill a new well. If you're interested in groundwater and this subject, you can learn more about how we use this water annually to augment our water supply. Just click on the next link right here.